but we're gonna go on to the next to the next one. So um, our next talk is my ways, and it's part one. So uh, I'll give Caroline this this slideshow, and you guys can do the scavenger hunt with your parish, um, even with yourselves. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna share my our next one, my ways, part one, and. I will stop sharing my screen so I can share again. And hold on. Not that one. This one. Okay, can you all see my, can you all see my slideshow? Yeah? Okay, so my ways, and I'll go through this one pretty quick. Um, let's see, awesome. All right, so my ways. So my ways is based on, okay, my roots are my roots. And regardless of what I do, I cannot change my roots. That is just my nature. Okay, and when I try to be different than my roots, then that's when things get really rough for me because I get into my ways and my ways try to change who I was originally made to be because I was created in the image of God. So going back to our beautiful tree of life, our tree, we said that the roots is a family origin where you come from, your culture, your faith, your tradition, your history. Um, the trunk of the tree is your identity, is who you are. Not because you're shaped a certain way means you're not beautiful or you're different or or you don't belong. No, your identity, it's it comes from the roots. And then as we go up, the next thing is your your branches, right? Which is the person, place, or a thing. The persons, the places, and the things where you have been. And we know they're going to be there, but sometimes they're going to leave. And unfortunately, sometimes us as girls, we don't let go of some of the branches that need to leave. And the leaves, obviously, is a good and the bad moments that we go through in life. They, they're going to go, okay? Just like the four seasons, right? They're going to come and they're going to go. And we need to be prepared for the new ones. We can't stay stuck in the past and in the old, um, um, in the old rusty uh, leaves that want to stay on our tree. No. Every single time we renew, and that's what God does for each of us. So faith. Faith is something, um, something I cannot see, but I know it's there. So how does my root play a role in my faith? How does my Mexican roots play, um, play an important role in, in my faith? Well, faith is the food of the roots of my tree. Without the faith, my tree is not going to be fed. As soon as I'm ashamed of where I'm from, as soon as I'm ashamed of my history, as soon as I'm ashamed of the traditions in, in my life, guess what, guys? The faith is gone, okay? Because all of the things that we just said is exactly that. It's faith. We cannot see it, but we know they happened. And we know they are extremely important for our lives. So um, it is to believe in your roots, your culture, family, origin, tradition, and in your history. Maybe there's going to be events that we're not going to be proud of. Maybe there's going to be roots that we're not proud of. But guess what? They make us. And everything in our life is for a reason. Okay? So, um what are elements of faith? Accepting and receiving Jesus Christ. Learning about who Jesus Christ is. 
those are some elements. But be grateful. Keep good company. Yield positive results. Pray every single day. You might think, well, I don't know who Jesus is. And to be honest with you, Miss Gabby, uh, it's really hard to accept Jesus because I don't know him. Or maybe I don't want to know him. But guess what? Have you guys ever said thank you to anyone? Raise your hand if you have. Raise your hand. Okay. If you have said thank you to someone, you have already accepted Christ in your life. Because Christ is that person that's in front of you. Every single time that you say thank you, every single time that you say please, every single time you open a door for someone, you are being like Jesus. You were created in the image of Christ. And that means you receive and you accept Christ when you accept others. Accept your mom, accept your dad. I know sometimes it's hard to deal with our mamas and our daddies. I know it's hard. Um, but guess what? They are our parents and we should honor them. Regardless of who they are, who they have been, they probably have not been the best. They probably have been the best. And if you are grateful for that, you have already accepted Christ in your life. If you want to learn more about your mom, you want to learn more about the roots of your dad, guess what? You're already learning a little bit more of their history and of why they are like that. Okay? Um, always keep a good company. Uh, my mom always said, my mommy always said something to me. Dime con quien te juntas y te diré quien eres. Tell me who you will hang with and I will tell you who you are. And if she would say, if you hang with wolves, you're going to become like them. You're going to become one. Okay? So don't think if you hang out with, with bad people, it's not going to happen. Remember the story, the love story that I told you, okay? How bad is it for that mom to be missing her kids, you know? Because they thought they were hanging with good people or sheep dressed like wolves. Uh, pray every day. Prayer is also loving people. As soon as you say, Brianna, I love you, mama. You're already praying. That is prayer. Uh, or saying a Hail Mary, or saying an Our Father, or uh, waking up and saying, thank you, God. Okay? Or making the sign of the cross. Um, uh, tradition beliefs from generation to generation. So tradition is that. It's any belief that you have that goes from generation to generation. Um, how, do I, how does my Hispanic roots play a role in, in tradition? Is the importance of who I am? Um, me being in high school, it was tough. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I was very confused when I was in high school. And I did not want any of my friends to know where I came from or what my tradition was. I didn't want them to know my beliefs that came from generation to generation. I was ashamed because I was illegal. I was ashamed because I was Mexican. I was ashamed because I didn't speak like the others did. And guess what? It caused me a lot of suffering when I didn't understand what tradition was and how important my tradition was for me to find myself. Um, being proud of who you are. At the moment I started accepting myself for who I was, accepting the 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 little bit of, of accent that I have when I speak English, that is where my beauty begins, of, of how I sound, of how I pronounce my words. Um, as accepting myself uh, for the beauty of my generations um, have given me like an opportunity to have the job that I have. Um, I have gotten to many places because I started accepting the tradition in my, in my life. So because of my English and my Spanish speaking skills, and because I'm able to identify traditions, cultures, um, all these beautiful things in our roots, I was able to, to have different jobs throughout my career. So 
So now I'm going to present Maren to you all. Maren is my niece. She's 16 years old. She was born also in the U.S. and she is Mexican. Um, both of her parents are from Mexico. Mother is from Zacatecas and her father is from Hidalgo. She is number two in the family of four. She is sisters with Brianna. She has a brother that's 22 and a sister that's 14, which is Brie. And she has a little sister by the name of Mia. And now I present to you all Maren, and Maren is going to present to you um, a slideshow of one of the most beautiful traditions in our, in our culture, and that is her quinceañera. <laughs> Take it away, Maren. Hi. Mm -hmm. My name is Maren Rangel. Um, I'm going to be talking about my quince and what we're doing. So my quinceanera to me is planning and celebrating my 15 years, uh, which is the perfect opportunity to show my friends and family um, how much I've grown. At first, I thought a quinceanera was like a big party where you dance and eat and all that. Um... I didn't really know the true meaning of a uh, quinceanera. But your quinceanera is a celebration of your 15 years, of course. Uh, but you're moving from childhood to adulthood. Like, I'm responsible for my faith, and I'm very pure with God. Virgin Mary is our role model in life. How she's so pure, she's always loving God. And, I mean, she's the mother of Jesus. Like, her yes to God at such a young age is, like, the most incredible thing uh, the entire world has ever known. Uh, what does faith have to do with the quinceanera? Well, my faith is who I am and what I believe in. As I get older, I have to, cho I have to choose the choices to make on my own. I don't know if I said that right. It's okay. Uh, I have a strong belief that my faith will take me to a good path. My job is to just keep following that path. Um, my family's values, uh, customs, and faith uh, has been passed down to me. As I grow as a lady, uh, my role uh, for model of my family um for my family's tradition uh, and faith for the future, for their future. As a quinceanera, I express the commitment to God and promises my faith, religion, and my community, I will continue to mature in values in my life and faith. Uh, what tradition are you celebrating in your quinceanera? Well, there are, very, there are many quinceaneras, parties. The quinceaneras uses different traditions. Uh, the true meaning of my faith and tradition symbols are very important for my 15. For example, um, the tiara. It means that you are the princess of the day. The ring and the bracelet means the unending love of God. The earrings mean to listen to the word of God. And the doll that looks just like you, that means that you're leaving your childhood behind or you're maturing. Um, the candle means that you, it is the light of Jesus Christ. Um, there's more stuff that has a lot of meaning to it. Uh, whenever I, I first heard about this, I was like shocked because I never knew this. And mm -hmm. Everything in my tradition is about our father and being pure with Jesus Christ. Uh, how are you preparing for your quinceanera? So I'm in confirmation and I'm gonna get confirmed this year. I'm preparing with my formation of my faith and going to mass each Sunday. And I pray the rosary almost every day with my family. We have this uh, group chat, not group chat, but we go on this Google Meet and we all just pray 
the rosary. As far as the party, I wouldn't have done nothing if it weren't for my tia and my family and my mom. Um, each month, I set a goal. For example, next month, I get my dress and my tiara. Or probably next week, I order my caterings and my DJ. Uh, I'm having my fifth team with my sister, Brianna Ringel. So, like, we see the pros and cons, what we should do, what we shouldn't do. If you're doing your quinceanera, you should probably uh, explain it with your guardian and plan things out. Uh, you want to have a special day. You don't want to stress about anything. Don't be stressing about, about, like, a little stain on your dress or be crying that your cake is ruined or something like that. Uh, just make it really easier for your family and you. Uh, by the way, when my grandma will be one of my daughters. <laughs> Um, and that's it. Thank you so much for having me today. Thank you, Maren. Um, Maren and Brianna created a list as part of their tradition, part of their tradition or part of our tradition is to have a quinceañera. And with part of the tradition, they have an amazing little book that they have been preparing their quinceañera with. So they created a list of questions for you all to facilitate if you're gonna have a quinceañera coming soon, okay? So that's the end of this talk. Thank you all for listening. Now uh, we're gonna transition into our next one, but before we do that, we're gonna have a small prayer. Um, and we are going to say a glory be. So glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen.